Have you ever wondered which ad attribution settings should you be using, right? Should I be using 7 day click or 1 day view or essentially 1 day click, right? So when is the right time to use each of these attribution models and what other attribution models exist out there that you should be considering in what context? So if you're new to the channel, you don't yet know who I am. My name is Justin and I'm the founder at paidadvertising.com. An e-commerce growth firm having partnered with over 70 brands in the last three years and having spent over $12 million on ads profitably on behalf of our partners. So let's get straight into today's video. Looking at Meta's uh, blog, essentially, which they have some more information about the different ad attribution settings. I'll also show you other ad attribution settings that exist in the context in which you'd want to look at them. So I'll show you both on Meta and on Triple Wild. And keep in mind, the same applies for TikTok and most paid social platforms in this video. So seriously, I'm running ads currently across Meta, TikTok, Snapchat, and Pinterest. And the same is true across every platform. So attribution models work the same no matter the platform. Some Sometimes just the windows of these attribution models are slightly different, but the principle remains the same. So by default on Facebook, you will find yourself with a seven day click one day view window. And they've most recently added an engaged view window to that. So what it means is the following. So my goal is to yes, make this beginner friendly, but also go in depth for any of you watching this video that are already making, you know, 50, 100, 200, 500 K a month with your brand so that you understand the intricacies of why you need more than just this click review through attribution models, which I'll share in a second. So click through is the window by which somebody falls under your attribution if they've clicked on an ad. So I'll give you an example. I see an ad on my Facebook feed today. I click on this ad. So as long as I make a conversion as an example within 24 hours, if I've selected in my ad settings 20, like one day click, then in this case, the ad will see a conversion being attributed back as an example. If this is the setting I select, so when they click, right? And then somebody clicks on an ad today, but only buys, let's say, uh, within two days, even though they've bought, even though they clicked on my ad, my ad won't see this attribution coming back to it. So there are three reasons to consider when choosing which attribution model to use. Number one is how much data you want to send back to the algorithm. So it learns from this data essentially and takes better decisions, which has a lot to do also with budget and the buying cycle of your brand. And number two is what are you trying to get out of that data? Why are you analyzing a certain piece of data, which that I'll explain in a second. And three also is the type of ad that you're running. Generally speaking, for most businesses, the default seven day click one day view is going to be what you want to use. Now, some people argue that view through attribution has nothing to do with the results. You shouldn't even look at it. And a click through is the only way to factor in attribution to that. I personally call BS and my opinion might change with time, but here's the reason why at my own business, right? I run a marketing agency. I post content like this on YouTube. We send out hold outbound communications to prospects. We run ads on both Facebook, Google, and often also on TikTok. We post organic contents on pretty much every Every major social media platform. And I can tell you for a fact, attribution is very delicate because I've realized that the more ad spend I put every month, the more calls I suddenly get attributed to every other source in our business. And now it's very broad. I could show you more in depth, but it's just to say that view through is real. In my opinion, if somebody sees an ad, but they don't necessarily take action from it right there, they, it might lead them to a direct action path. You'll see that a lot sometimes with like Google Analytics four as an example. So a G for property where you'll see an increase in direct conversions, the more spend you have on Facebook. That's one of the metrics I love to look at always on triple wall for most accounts, because most of them have a positive correlation coefficient between Facebook ad spend and Google ads ROAS, which in this case, this account, the last 30 days is 0.3. So in other words, if I increase my ad spend by 10% on meta, then my Google ROAS increases by 30%. What this correlation coefficient means is that if I increase my ad spend as an example by 100% on meta, then my uh, Google ad ROAS is going to skyrocket by 30 4% is what this means. And this is true again for a lot of brands that we're running ads for because of this view, view through attribution, right? And technically, I don't mind if Facebook takes that into consideration because for most businesses spending less than a few thousand dollars a day, you want to give as much data as possible to Facebook so that it learns from it. And technically, if somebody viewed an ad today, but within 24 hours, that's still a qualified person to go after in Facebook's eyes. So what the view through window means, in other words, is if I view an ad on my feed today, I don't click on it, but I buy within the next 24 hours, this ad is going to get the credit. So some pathways where this could happen is that I view an ad, I'm like, oh, this is interesting. 
interesting, then I go and Google the brand, right? And then I buy from Google, which also explains the correlation that I just showed you earlier. Now, Engage View is quite new. Honestly, it's very similar to View Through Attribution. It's just essentially View Through means anybody who just saw the ad on their feed, if they scrolled away quite fast, they would be considered into the attribution window. Engage View is somebody who actually stopped, let's say, watched a good portion of the video or really interacted with the photo ad. So Engage View is only for videos. And that is if somebody stopped on their feed, watched a considerable portion of your video, and then didn't take action. That's what counts as an Engage View. You could argue that Engage View essentially is the next step or the step further in between view through and click through attribution, right? Because click through has kind of the warmest intent that person clicked. So they had the intent to at least go check what was going on with your website view through. They may not be any intent. That person just saw the product essentially or the ad on their feed engage is somewhere in the middle as they didn't click, but they got hooked long enough to pay a lot of attention to this video in itself. So this is what it is essentially and what it does. And it says it right here. It's a non click conversion attribution that measures conversions occurring after a person views a substantial portion of a skippable video ad and converts within 24 hours. So typically as a rule of thumb for most businesses, you'll want to pick 70 click one day view to one get enough data Two, we can both sit there and argue but somebody who's viewed an ad within the last 24 hours and buys chances are they were influenced by this ad, regardless of what you want to say, they've seen this ad, it's stuck in their mind, it might be subconscious, but it's good enough in my book to attribute back and give that data to Facebook just so at least it learns from it. So that essentially are the different attribution settings on a platform. Now I'm going to bring up triple wall, keep in mind it this is not just for triple wall, a lot of other platforms are doing these same attribution models. So as an example, um, last click basis, this is very common, essentially amongst most ad platforms, just so you know, or work on a last click basis. What this means is if I saw two Facebook ads, okay, so I saw Facebook ad one, and I clicked on it today. And I saw Facebook ads two today, and I clicked on it again, and then I buy right, I fall under the attribution window of both of these ads, Facebook wouldn't attribute two sales. No, they'd only attribute one on a last click basis. So the last ad that I would have clicked, essentially, which is the latest ad right now, first click is the complete opposite is basically the exact opposite of what I just said. So I see one ad today, I click on it, I don't buy tomorrow, I see a second ad, I click on it, I buy then the first ad I clicked yesterday is going to get the attribution. Now linear, essentially, I like that model. I'm going to go a little near all essentially is that this only works with when you have a third party attribution source like triple wall, which it's going to look at the data you have across, let's say all channels, and it's going to try and find cross attribution. So as an example, same thing happens here, going back to this, Google has a similar attribution window. In fact, Google even still goes the 28 day, essentially, that you can set up um, as a conversion window. Pinterest also does 30 days. So and even more, I believe right now, I think they even have like a 60 day attribution window, which is crazy. But just to say, if somebody clicks on a Facebook ad today, and tomorrow they click on a Google ad and buy. And if you don't have a third party attribution software, then Facebook reports one conversion and Google will report one conversion because that person falls under the attribution window of both of these app platforms. So this is where models like linear all come in where what linear all will do is it'll look at both of these channels and it, it'll distribute an equal credit to both of them. So as an example, right here, if a customer clicked on Facebook ad one, then Facebook ad two, then a TikTok ad and finally made a purchase, then all three ads would receive partial credit, which means that the credit is distributed evenly between them. So in this case, as, a, as an example, if we went last click only, so as an example, this is where it gets very interesting and complicated to understand. But if I ran ads without triple wall, and I only have the ad platforms to attribute from in this example, Facebook ad two would get the attribution on Facebook and the TikTok ad that the person clicked in the last like example right here would also get the credit on TikTok. So you'd see two conversions, whereas the answer is one. Now, in this case, there's one conversion, what's going to end up happening is instead of giving let's say 50% credits to the Facebook ad number two and 50% credit to the TikTok ad, we're going to have 0.3 of the credits to Facebook ad one 0.3 of the credit to Facebook ad number two and 0.3 point three of the credit to the TikTok ad. So each of these ads gets basically like an equal amount of credit attributed to them because they've all played a role in the conversion cycle. So basically what linear does is again, it just splits equally the credits given to every channel that played a role into a conversion. Now, if I look into other models, so honestly, triple attribution, triple attribution plus views, I won't really get into it. It's basically 70 click one day view, um, but uh, used from like triple all standpoint, which their analysis of it, which is sometimes slightly lower, sometimes slightly higher than Facebook. Um, total impact is where it gets very interesting. Think of total impact as linear model, but that factors in the actual impact in true, if you want scale of each channel. So 
on top of the data that's uh, linear all as an example would factor in the other thing that is added to total impact is post purchase surveys. So it'll also look at all the post purchase surveys that people answered and apparently uh, triple was own kind of machine learning and artificial intelligence to add a weighted model to these conversions. So I'll go back to the example from earlier. Okay, I'll go back to the example from linear. What that would mean is if a customer clicked on Facebook ad one, then Facebook ad two, and a TikTok ad and finally made a purchase. But then because of triple walls machine learning, triple walls like, you know what, they spent a lot of time as an example on this TikTok ad or that TikTok ad really like this is when they took the most actions on the website. So you could say that this one had more impact than the other ads. So instead of giving 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, it might say this one has 0.8. And I'm going to give 0.1 to these ads. So it's a weighted model, it doesn't distribute the credit equally, it distributes it with a different weight based on the actual impact of each channel, which naturally speaking, if you look at total impact on triple wall, you'll always see Google being lower than it really is in let's say a triple attribution model. Why? Because arguably speaking, we both know watching this video right now that Google in itself always has less impact than paid social because Google is quote unquote, a bottom of funnel channel, right? It really is most people going to Google are product aware for the most part, they're actively searching with an intent to buy. Therefore, that intent was created elsewhere, it was either created organically, or it was created through a paid social would it be your campaign or perhaps or competitors campaign, right? If a competitor is outspending you on paid social, you can do very well with just running Google ads, because you're going to be recouping a lot of the intent they're creating on paid social. So that's just a little thing to keep in mind on your side as to why let's say channels like Google always look lower on total impact. And now the context in which you want to use all of these is slightly different. So as an example, if I go to triple wall, and I look at my home summary page, one of the first things I would look at as a brand owner is my MER, which that's like the golden metric in advertising, how much of your total revenue are you spending on ads, the rule of thumb is you should be spending on an evergreen basis about 30% total revenue into ad spend, and on a promotion basis or when launches 20%, right, because you got to account for the fact that you have like discounted products. Okay, so 29% as an example, in this case, uh, um, MER, which means a blended ROAS of about 3.4. Um, in this case, for this business, which means it's pretty healthy overall. Now, keep in mind, you also have to have some form of scale. Um, I'm saying that because let's say 30%, you know, MER, but you're only spending $1,000 a month. Um, and you have all these other costs in the back end, like you won't be profitable. That's for a an average brand, let's say spending about 10k a month or more on ads. This is where 30% MER starts to make sense. Now, the less you spend, the lower your MER has to be in order for you to make up for these other big costs that you have, which is honestly also frankly, why agencies typically don't work with smaller brands, because the smaller the ad budget, the smaller the overall revenue, the bigger the retainer looks in the overall scheme of things, and the harder it is to make this brand profitable. So going back right here, you should be looking at about 30% MER, that first answer you get from looking at MER is am I spending too much on marketing? Overall, the answer is either yes, or no, right. And it also kind of tells you, am I profitable, right? Am I profitable? Overall, you should have an MER target for your brand, right? You should have a total MER target that is regardless of the per channel targets you'll set, you should have an overall spending target for your brand. So okay, I'm at 29% MER, let's say I know I'm profitable, then this is when you start looking at channel based metrics. Okay, so you would look at as an example, Facebook ads, Facebook ads itself, is this profitable for this month, if I'm using triple wall, this is when I would use triple attribution plus views. So I'll look at it as a channel basis, is this profitable? Yes or no? If the answer is yes, then I know I'm doing good. If the answer is no, then I know I need to improve that specific channel in itself, because it's not really pulling its weight that much It's getting quote unquote carried by other channels in the business, or perhaps it's actually pushing a lot of traffic to other channels, which I'll get to that in a second. Now, once you've looked at per channel basis metrics, the third thing you're going to want to look at is most likely lighthouse, which on triple, I love to look at lighthouse, I showed you that earlier is okay, well, let's say Facebook is or isn't profitable. Well, at least does it have a positive impact on other channels in my business, right? So maybe Facebook isn't pulling its weight on its own, which that is a problem in itself, I'll have to fix that I'll still make sure that Facebook pulls its weights on its own, because ideally, in an ideal world, you'd want all channels to be able to be profitable on their own. But let's say it isn't 
at least does it have a positive impact on another channel? In this case, it does. It have an above zero impact. It has a, in this case, 34% impact on Google. Then great. I know that my Google is looking better because I'm running Facebook ads, which therefore means I know that if I'm stopping my Facebook ads, Google will start looking a lot lower. Ah, interesting. So then this is why you would go back to your pixel and start looking into channels or uh, attribution models, I should say, like linear or total impact, which is okay. Well, now that I know and have the confirmation my channels have a positive impact together, really, how big is that impact, right? How big is that difference in ROAS when I switch to, let's say, a linear? Do I see a lot of duplicates, let's say, coming from different channels? Or if I switch to total impact, which channel seems to have the highest impact in my business and why, right? Keep in mind, what is shown in total impact isn't the actual channel based ROAS, right? It simply removes the duplications and shows a weighted model of impact. But truthfully, once again, each of these attribution models needs to be used contextually. They all have their own play. It's not like, should I be using total impact or triple attribution? No, both. It depends what you're trying to look at, what you're trying to analyze and the reason why you're looking at this data. If you're looking at seeing once again, and I'll repeat myself for the last time in this video, channel based metrics, channel based performance, look at triple attribution or triple attribution plus views. If you want to see the weighted impact of which channel has the biggest impact in your business and where should you allocate more spend to look at total impact. That's this is for like top level uh, spending decisions. MER is to be looked at at an overall metric. Am I just spending too much across the board? Yes or no. And going last right here, last click would simply allow me to look at which channels are essentially bringing it home. First click means which channel are actually starting this whole conversion cycle, which again, I'm looking at both of them differently for contextual analysis. And finally, linear year is, well, if I want to remove these duplicate attributions, what are the channels that have like a common pathway together in a purchases journey? Then potentially when looking at linear, I'll see like, oh, it's interesting. I see a lot of Facebook and TikTok splitting conversions together. So that means people are really interacting between these two channels. Oh, great. So I know there's a pathway between my Facebook ad to my TikTok ad. Perhaps I should tailor my marketing strategy to make sure I have ads that help people go from Facebook to TikTok and vice versa. So that's why you look at all of these attribution models and the context in which you'd want to use them. And if you are looking for a paid ads partner badged on Meta, Google and TikTok and you want to crush it this new year, click the link down below and book on a call to speak with our team at paidadvertising.com. And on that note, I'm going to wish you an amazing day. Check out other videos on the channel for some more useful e-commerce marketing tips and I'll see you in next video. Peace.